Hi, I'm Terry Malisi, and welcome to The Gathering. Today's show is pretty exciting to me because not only am I going to have a dear friend for dinner along with my brother and our cameraman, Ian, it also allows me to prepare a meal of my ethnicity, which is Italian. So today's menu is going to consist of a marinated seafood salad for an appetizer, lamb chops with garlic sauce, stuffed bell peppers, potato fritters, and then we're going to finish off with tiramisu, one of my all-time favorite desserts. So uh, let's get started. We're going to start with the um, dessert first so that it'll have a couple of hours to chill in the fridge. Now I've got a double boiler set up going over here and what we have is four egg yolks, quarter cup of Marcella wine, a cup and a quarter of sugar, cup of heavy cream, uh, three tablespoons of uh, cocoa unsweetened, and we have um, two and a half tablespoons of um, grated semi-sweet chocolate and 10 ounces of mascarpone. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the egg yolks and the sugar, beat those up a little bit, put that in a double boiler, put that going, and take the marsala and add that to it. And you want to keep stirring so that the egg yolks really don't cook. Just want to heat it up. And we're going to add the sugar. We want to cook this for about oh, 10 minutes on medium heat until all the sugar dissolves. And you have to keep stirring it because you don't want, again, the egg yolks to cook. And this right here is called zabioni. And it is uh, used a lot in Italian desserts. Okay, now, this is at a good consistency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to our board here, if you can see this, and stir this until it's cooled down. We also have four cups of very strong coffee. Now the story of this dish is no one really knows what cook invented it, but it was somewhere between Venice and Treviso because this is where it started showing up in restaurants and spreading like wildfire before taking over the entire country. Of course, making its way over here sometime later. And it's one of my all-time favorite desserts. Cannolis are right up there. Maybe we'll do those in another show. Okay, so this appears to be pretty cool. I'm going to let that set for a bit. Then I'm going to take my mascarpone and my cream, add the two together, and then I'm going to mix them until I get a pretty good consistency. And it should result in a thick liquid is gently fold the zabioni into the mascarpone mixture. Here. You just want to gently fold it in.
Mascarpone is a is a soft cheese, kind of with the consistency of a cream cheese, but it has a slight sweet flavor to it. It's very nice. What we're gonna do is we have some lady fingers, and I lined a dish with them. What we're gonna do is we're going to drizzle lightly over the lady fingers. And then we're going to drizzle the unsweetened cocoa over oh, about half because we'll be repeating this layer. Good. Then we're going to take the lady fingers and make another layer. Make sure. And then we're going to repeat that process. Tiramisu in Italian means pick me up because of the marsala and the coffee. And who couldn't use a nice pick-me-up after a, a nice Italian meal? So again, we're gonna finish off with the rest of the cocoa. Just pour that all over. And then what we're gonna do going to layer it with the Zabioni Mascarpone liquid mixture. And you just want to make a nice, even flow. You want to tap it just a bit so that things will settle. And if there are any spots where the mixture isn't, you can just run it over. What we'll do is we're going to take our grated chocolate, semi-sweet, dark Ghirardelli's, two and a half tablespoons. And there you have it, tiramisu will be a nice, um, dessert to finish off our menu. And I'm going to put this in the fridge to chill for at least oh, maybe four hours. And um, when I come back, we'll start with the seafood salad. So see you in a bit. Hi, and welcome back to the gathering. Now for our appetizer, marinated seafood salad. As you can see, it's got a beautiful array of um, <clears throat> seafood. We have two pounds of mahogany little clams from Maine. We've got two pounds of squid, cleaned, and I'll slice those in a bit. Two pounds of sea scallops, two pounds of shrimp, and two pounds of mussels. And what we're gonna do is we're going to poach them separately, except for the shrimp, in some boiling water that I'm going to flavor with five chopped scallions, and three tablespoons of wine. So I'm going to put this in the water. It's already boiling. And then stir that around. I am going to start with the little necks. Um, what we have here, we're going to be serving the salad on radicchio and curly endive once it's all chilled and marinated. So we're going to drop these in and this shouldn't take long at all. This should take a minute or two at best. When you purchase the clams or the mussels and if any are open or cracked don't use them. When you cook them, if they don't open, don't use them, throw them away. That means they were dead before they hit the water. 
Once we get our seafood poached, we're going to make a marinating dressing, which consists of five tablespoons of olive oil, a tablespoon and a half of white wine, three tablespoons of freshly chopped Italian parsley, which is the flat kind, and four garlic cloves minced. Once we have that going, I'm going to make a garlic mayonnaise so that we can serve this on the side on the, on the salad plate. And this consists of 10 tablespoons of mayonnaise, six tablespoons of plain yogurt, three tablespoons of capers, and four minced garlic cloves. So let's check out our clams, see how they're doing. I'm going to remove them into this bowl so they can cool down. Okay, now we're going to throw the scallops in. Get those going. I'm going to slice my squid into rings. The squid can go in next. Okay, so there are our scallops. Now we're going to throw calamari in. Squid, we call it calamari. And I would cook this for a minute, maybe two, not longer. Because these you do not want tough. What you can do when you're done cooking all this seafood, you can reserve the liquid, freeze it, and use it for a stock. Whenever you need a fish stock, maybe a nice bouillabaisse. base. But that's French and we're not going to go there right now. Okay, so squid is done. This is a beautiful dish for a beach picnic. Let's throw in our mussels. And again, same rule applies as the clams. Mix my marinade together. We've got the oil. And we've got the white wine. And we've got the three tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. And then we have the garlic. Nice consistency. It's there. We're going to let these cool off. Pretty nice, huh? And what we're going to do now is combine our seafood with some of the liquid that was in there, as well as our shrimp. Mix this up a bit. Take these out of the shell. Very simple. Might be a little time consuming, but again, I don't want my guests to be dealing with this. Very good. And then we're going to add this that. Take the marinade. Pour that on there. If you want to sneak a taste, that's okay, just to make sure everything came out okay. Mm. Delicious. So, what I'd like to do right now is make that garlic mayonnaise. So when I chill that, I'll chill this as well. I'm going to add those 10 tablespoons of mayonnaise with the 6 tablespoons of yogurt. Let's mix that up. Add 3 tablespoons of capers. And then the 4 minced garlic cloves. 
And when we serve this, again, we're going to serve it on the radicchio and the curly endive. And we'll put a dollop of this dressing on the plate as well, along with lemon wedges. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the fridge to chill. We're now ready to stuff our bell peppers. I have these wonderful peppers here, two of each color, red, yellow, orange, and green. And what I did with those was I roasted them and then peel them and have them and demembrane them and seeded them. And here we have 25 slices of white bread, crust removed, hand broken up. We have three tablespoons of pine nuts, three tablespoons of golden raisins soaked in hot water for 15 minutes and squeezed dry. We have two tablespoons of capers, and we have one can of anchovies packed in oil, drained, and finely minced. And we have one whole bunch of Italian flat parsley processed in a food processor and five tablespoons of olive oil. And what we're going to do is mix the stuffing up. So we're going to go ahead and put all of the ingredients in. Lovely anchovies. I just love anchovies. And the oil. The flavors are beautiful. The anchovies and the capers. Um, again, you know, pungent flavors, but just a wonderful combination. We're going to take each pepper and just Form some stuffing in it and place it in the prepared pan. Um, I'm just going to rinse my hands off and pop those in a 350 oven for about 20 minutes and when we come back we're going to get going on our potato fritters. Hi and welcome back. Now we're ready to get those potato fritters going. And what I have here are five pounds of potatoes uh, boiled and mashed with six tablespoons of butter. Now this particular recipe comes from the Genovese region which incorporates distinctive tastes of pine nuts and fresh margarine. Three quarter um, cups of um, pine nuts and um, three sprigs of marjoram processed in a food processor. And I'm going to add that to the potatoes. And I'm going to mash that all up. And I can smell it. Those nuts are just amazing. And the marjoram's nice as well. What you want to do, I've got six eggs separated. Here are the yolks, here are the whites. What we're going to do is take each egg yolk and mix that up separately. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our parmesan, freshly grated, and mix that in as well. And what we're going to do is we are going to Take our three cups of dried breadcrumbs, unflavored, because you don't want to take away from the flavors in the potatoes. And what you want to do is just want to make little balls. Like so. Dip it in the egg whites and in the breadcrumbs.
Hi, and welcome back. Well, as you can see, our potato fritters are ready to go in the frying pan. And it's all set to go. So we've got our peppers in the oven. They're cooking. And it's just a wonderful thing. Hi, welcome back. It's about an hour before our guests are going to be arriving. But as you can see, the potato fritters are cooked. The stuffed bell peppers are out of the oven. And we're about ready to start with our main course. And if you haven't noticed, my cameraman, Ian, opened up this beautiful bottle of Chianti to let it breathe and to have me give it a taste to see what it's like. We'll be serving this with dinner. It smells nice. a little bit dry. Mmm, very nice. <laughs> I'm cooking where heavy cream is acceptable is in this decidedly modern recipe that clearly illustrates the lightening process which is currently in process um, throughout the new uh, Italian gastronomy. Now traditionally lamb is uh, flavored directly with things like garlic, rosemary, and other herbs finely chopped mixed with salt and pepper. But here these flavors are limited and tempered by the cooking in the wine in, in the by the cooking in the cream which then becomes a delicate sauce. So, what we're going to do first is get that nice and going. I've got the oven heating up to 400 degrees. Lay these out. Aren't these beautiful? And we will throw these in the oven for, oh, about 30 to 40 minutes. So, while I'm throwing that in the oven, I will get our sauce going and be right back to you. I'm going to throw these racks in. And what we have here three cups of heavy cream, five cloves of garlic minced, a tablespoon and a half of flour, three bay leaves, and two sprigs of rosemary. So I'm going to put the cream in the pan. take our garlic and our bay leaves and our rosemary. First I'm going to incorporate the garlic and this is the lightening process. Very quick cooking with the spices and herbs. I'm going to take the three bay leaves put those in. I'm going to take the two sprigs of rosemary and put those in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this cook for a bit. Let the flavors enhance the cream. And right before serving, we'll add the flour. Actually, we'll remove the bay leaves and the rosemary sprigs and then add the flour to thicken it up. So I'm going to let this sit here for a little bit. 
And what I'm going to do now is go and set the table because we've had a little bit of change of plans. Uh, Donna and her girls can't make it tonight because uh, one of her daughters became ill. And so we're having a repeat uh, guest performance of Steve and Patty Bryant. And they may be bringing along two guests as well. So you never know what's going to happen here at the gallery. But, you know, the, the motto is go with the flow. Well, here I am getting these appetizers ready. Um, and what I'm going to do is line the plate with a couple of leaves of the radicchio. Lay down a few pieces of those. Then I want to take this curly endive, put it maybe off to the side. I'm going to take this beautiful seafood salad that's been marinating in the fridge for some time. And we're just going to pour some. I'm going to garnish each dish with two wedges of lemon and then this beautiful garlic mayonnaise put a dollop right in the corner there's our marinated seafood salad we have our beautiful racks of lamb and we'll have our rack of lamb with the garlic sauce potato fritters and the stuffed peppers. Now, we have the appetizers on the table and the main course is ready to go. So, all we're going to do is wait for Patty and Steve to arrive and we'll get going. So, be right back. That's it. <laughs> well guys, just yeah. another toast. Thank you for coming. Oh, for thanks for having us. It's just Fun. a wonderful spending time with you again. Anyway, thank you for joining us here at the gathering. And join us next time because you never know what we're going to be preparing or home. Thanks for stopping in.